Senator Murkomen. Uh, Senator Sakaja, the Speaker, um, before he appeared there to give notice, um, I know where he was before he, he came online, the Speaker, but let me leave it for the discussion. That, that, that is irrelevant. Let, let me leave it for the discussion of the, of the WhatsApp group where we are together. <laughs> the Speaker, the Speaker, that's on a light note. The Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity for me to contribute to this uh, budget policy statement, a very important agenda that brought us to the floor of this House. Mr. Speaker, this budget policy statement is significant in the sense that Mr. Speaker is the last one before, it's the last budget policy statement under the presidency of um, uh, President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and therefore gives us a good review of the performance of this administration uh, especially in the last five years. Mr. Speaker, this budget policy statement uh, is important because also through budget policy statements we are able to see what is the guiding principle or the policy uh, position of government in the various issues that we the, is trying to pursue. What you would expect from this budget policy statement, Mr. Speaker, is a culmination of a 10-year program of uh, President Uru Kenyatta's presidency and the five years especially when you talk about the big four agendas. Mr. Speaker, uh, unfortunately, scanning through all these documents, a little is said about the big four agenda, Mr. Speaker. Little emphasis is given to the important programs that were promised to the people of Kenya in 2018 when this administration, Mr. Speaker, after winning elections and after shaking hands with the opposition to form a quasi uh, uh, government of national unity that uh, with a shared power of uh, President Uru Kenyatta and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. And Mr. Speaker, from then, from 2018, it has been a very sad story of uh, government programs, particularly the budget policy, I mean, particularly the Big Four agenda, which we promised the people of Kenya to be implemented the second time of President Uru Kenyatta, has taken a back seat. And as you know, Mr. Speaker, it has been a, a, a chase of Mr. Speaker Mirage, known as BBI, which is uh, uh, anchored on changing the constitution to create positions for us who are in political power. Mr. Speaker, this budget policy statement, though, is, speaks directly to things that are real uh, about the status of our economy. It speaks about the status of debt, Mr. Speaker. It speaks about the economic growth, uh, how, Mr. Speaker, we have stagnated. And, Mr. Speaker, this also budget policy statement paints a very gloomy picture about the future of our uh, resources in terms of uh, uh, towards uh, shared resources to county governments and national government and towards development, particularly as a result of debt, Mr. Speaker, that is skyrocketing. Mr. Speaker, when uh, I moved a motion in this House to uh, ex extend the, uh, the ceiling, the debt ceiling, Mr. Speaker, the argument that was given by the Treasury uh, was that, Mr. Speaker, we are doing so to restructure our debt and to be able to create an avenue for us to repay our debt but give room for us to work on our economic growth. Mr. Speaker, that remains a mirage. It's become uh, failed promises for the last three years. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it's been about borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. And as Senator Kajuan captured so well, it, there is nothing wrong with borrowing for capital-intensive projects. In fact, when the American economy was in Great Depression after the uh, First World War and the Great Depression that ensued around uh, 1929 to 1930s, early 1930s, Mr. Speaker, uh, the response of the Roosevelt administration was, Mr. Speaker, to engage in capital-intensive projects, which are the highways built in the United States. And, Mr. Speaker, there was, it was important that they engage in those capital-intensive projects so that they can open up, Mr. Speaker, the uh, uh, trade interstate commerce in the United States of America and facilitate, therefore, uh, trade among or within the United States among the 50 states. Mr. Speaker, the advantage of also engaging in those capital-intensive projects is that in, at the time when you are engaging in these projects, you are able to create um, employment for the many unemployed young people uh, in your country. But the objective of those projects must have an end to it in itself, Mr. Speaker. 
there must be a linkage between the capital intensive projects and the economic growth and the market. But Mr. Speaker, like Senator Kajuan captured so well, if a project is being done to end up in somebody's land, somebody's gate, somebody's home, Mr. Speaker, or for purpose of just painting a very good picture that we have a very big road that is um, coming from airport to uh, Westlands, Mr. Speaker, without that linkage as to how much trade it's going to contribute, Mr. Speaker, then it becomes counterproductive because then you accumulate more debt and more debt, you suffocate the economy, Mr. Speaker, you suffocate the market, uh, Mr. Speaker, and then you create the situation that we have in the country where this budget policy statement so properly captured by Senator Kibiru and his team says that, Mr. Speaker, the danger of the de debt, Mr. Speaker, the national debt, is that it is reaching a time where county governments will not get the equitable share they deserve because debt, as you know, is the first, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, payment to be defrayed from the uh, resources that we receive. Yeah, the first charge on the national, uh, Mr. Speaker, revenue uh, from the consolidated uh, uh, fund, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the second issue that I want to address is the county resources that go to the county. And Mr. Speaker, this is where I want Kenyans to follow so carefully. Mr. Speaker, two years ago, is it, it's now two years, one year ago, Mr. Speaker, we, this House engaged in a serious conversation about, Mr. Speaker, county allocation of revenue formula as to how we are going to share our resources among our 47 counties. That debate, Mr. Speaker, created uh, a scene in this country that has never been witnessed insofar as this Senate is concerned. It created factions within this chamber, Mr. Speaker. It created drama about some senators being arrested, others being, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, cajoled, others being, uh, Mr. Speaker, bought. There was a whole kind of uh, drama that took place in this chamber. And, Mr. Speaker, eventually, eventually, Mr. Speaker, we came up with a very important formula whose guiding principle, Mr. Speaker, was a win-win that no county should lose the resources that they were receiving by the time, Mr. Speaker, we were having this conversation. Mr. Speaker, it was at that point in time that a stalemate was broken by the executive promising that $370 billion was going to be given to counties to ensure that the formula that we had adopted will, not leave, will leave all counties, Mr. Speaker, at a stage where uh, 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 no county is going to lose resources. Mr. Speaker... After that, something called BBI came up. In this BBI, Mr. Speaker, the promise was 35% of, uh, of the revenue raised nationally was going to be given to county government. Meaning, Mr. Speaker, this $370 billion in this financial year, uh, with the projected revenue of $1.8 trillion, Mr. Speaker, being raised nationally, what we should be doing on the floor of this house, Mr. Speaker, is to divide the resources by giving county governments, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, as promised by BBI report, 630 billion. 630 billion shillings. Mr. Speaker, what has been done by Senator Kibiru, a great prominent of, 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 of BBI? What has been done by President Uru Kenyatta? A, 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 he always laments, he has been lamenting up to today. Oh, you know, BBI was to give you more resources. I want to challenge President Uru Kenyatta. If you truly believe in BBI, 630 billion should go to counties this year, not tomorrow. Mr. Speaker, if BBI was not about politics of just gerrymandering and Mr. Speaker trying to shepherd a particular individual to become the President of the Republic of Kenya, no, without going through proper auditing by the people of Kenya, let them, Mr. Speaker, show that BBI was about resources to the counties. Let them come here with a division of revenue bill next year, February, March, Mr. Speaker, that this house in April will pass a division of revenue bill that has 630 billion being given to three, uh, the three counties. If not, I would like to ask President Uru Kenyatta and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga and all those proponents of BBI to shut their mouths forever, Mr. Speaker, because they cannot speak on both sides of the mouth. On one hand, Tell Kenyans that, oh, you know, BBI was about giving money to counties and then come here and lie to the people of Kenya. And I want the people of Kenya to know that. Tell the people of Kenya, you are not going to get one shilling more than you got last year. Meaning, Mr. Speaker, this is, this is Mr. Kibiru's report, Senator Kibiru's report. Mr. Speaker, who speaks on behalf of the president here? What does it say? 
It says counties revenue will reduce from the 22% in this financial year. It will go to 17%, Mr. Speaker, of the revenue raised nationally. Mr. Speaker, oh, what's your Mr. Point Speaker of order, this Senator should really Trump make us... Order, I Senator. wish I was not interrupted on this very important point. It's, it's not an interruption. <laughs> the distinguished senator for El Gayo Marako in order to consistently and persistently refer to this as a Kibiru report when in fact it's a report of the Committee of Finance to which even you are truly here is a member and it's a serious critique of the BPS it is not a Kibiru report Mr. Speaker uh, Senator Wetangula was in, in Parliament when Parliament passed what was called a Mwangale report, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> or when they talk about uh, there's, Omamo, another, there's another point of Omamo order. report. There's Doesn't mean, Mr. Speaker, there were no other members. There's a point of order from Senator Kibiru. Come, come to the table. <laughs> yes, I don't deny that the president is, uh, is a good man. But the point I want just to inform you, uh, Senator Mulkomen, is that uh, we did not recommend 370. We have recommended 485 billion. It is the national treasury that, and the CRIs and the government that recommended that. But we as a committee, we went by the law and we have said that 5% of the audited accounts of 2017-2018. No, Mr. Speaker, I, it, it, that's exactly what I was saying, that in President Uru's government, he's proposing $370 billion. But Senator Kibiru, the right-hand man of President Uru Kenyatta, has brought a very serious critique of this report, saying that if we are going to go by 370 again, we will fall from the 22%, Mr. Speaker, we are at the moment, to 17%. And as we continue with the national debt and so forth, it looks like we are even going to go below the 15% required. And as Senator Kajuan captured so well, if the National Assembly had done its work to approve, Mr. Speaker, the county, uh, uh, I mean, the, the audited accounts, and we use the audited accounts of this financial year, the same way BBI says, Mr. Speaker, if we were to use the audited accounts of this financial year, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, assuming that the, the, the accounts would be audited on time, we would we'll be talking now of maybe 13 percent, Mr. Speaker, of the national uh, uh, revenue collected nationally going to counties. What am I trying to say? If I don't say anything today, Mr. Speaker, from this budget policy statement, I must say, Mr. Speaker, the deceit and the hypocrisy of the politics of BBI must be exposed in this chamber. And Mr. Speaker, the proponents and the preachers and the apostles and bishops or BBI, Mr. Speaker, must take responsibility for the lies they have given to the public, the Republic, that they intended to change the Constitution to increase revenue. If, Mr. Speaker, they are giving these people of Kenya not an extra one shilling to go to counties, they are saying we will allocate only 370 billion to counties. And this 370 billion is 17 percent of the revenue raised nationally using audited of accounts of 2017-2018. Which, Mr. Speaker, if you apply the audited accounts of this year, even if it's not audited, as BBI was proposing, Mr. Speaker, we are nowhere close to 15%. Ye preachers, Pharisees, Sadducees, Mr. Speaker, who have been lying to the people of Kenya, we want to tell them, come ye out, Mr. Speaker, come out. Come out and own up to your lies and politics of conmanship. And Mr. Speaker, as this chamber, when we reach, and I thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Senator uh, Senator, uh, the uh, party leader of Fort Kenya, a man we surely respect, Senator Wetangula, for really capturing this point of 490 billion. There is billion. another point of order. That 490 billion oh, is not Senator enough. Senator Yes. Oh. Uh, Senator Come and take your seat. You, are, you, you look like you want to fly or something. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Senator, Senator Murkomen has consistently used the word liars. And members of this house cannot be accused of being liars. So I don't expect he was referring to members of this house. No, no, no. He could have been referring to people who are not here. Yes. Is it in order for him to accuse persons who are not here of dishonesty, knowing very well that they have no right to, to defend themselves? 
Mr. Speaker, I was speaking about the Pharisees and Sadducees, Mr. Speaker. I don't know whether Senator Kajuan considers himself one of the Pharisees, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, they know themselves. They are not in this chamber. In a manner of conversation, I have said, anyone who has promised the people of Kenya that we were going to get 35% of national revenue to the counties, Mr. Speaker, lie to the people of Senator Kenya. Senator Kajuan, what is if it? If Mr. Speaker... There's another... <laughs> so, Take your seat, Senator Murukumba. He's making very good arguments, and, and, and uh, I really li like the line of his argument. But the consistent use of reference to liars, who is that liar? Is it William Ruto? Is it Raila Odinga? Is it Musalia Mudavadi? I mean, Mr. Speaker, if that liar is not in this house, is he in order to accuse persons of lying, of dishonesty, and yet those people are not here and are incapable of defending themselves. What would have been easy for him is not to play around with Pharisees and Sadducees and just withdraw the liar bit. Because if the liars are in this house, Senator Man, what you if the liars are in this house, then he needs to name them and substantiate. And if the liars are not in this house, then Mr. Speaker, he cannot he cannot accuse people who are incapable of defending themselves. I, I, perhaps he means William Ruto, maybe. But even if it was William Ruto, it is still not proper for him to call someone who's not in this house a liar without substantiation. Mr. Speaker, the liars are... Uh, Senator Kajuang is, is, uh, is right to suspect himself, uh, Mr. Speaker, in this thing, and to passionately defend those who lie to the people of Kenya, that 35% uh, uh, was going uh, uh, to go uh, uh, to Senator Murkomen. But the point I'm trying to make, Mr. You, Speaker... You use your time well because you have other yeah, forums to exactly. say these things thank you are saying. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, so my point, if I don't make any other point, is to say, Mr. Speaker, if this budget policy statement is not going to lead us, and I thank you, uh, Senator Kibiru, Senator Tangula, Senator Aaron Cheriot, and all the other members of the Finance Committee, Senator Mutula Kilons and others, who proposed $490 billion. 95 billion. Mr. Speaker, I will be urging them we improve it to the BBI uh, proponent standards, Mr. Speaker, to move it to 600 billion that will go to counties. And we want President Uru Kenyatta to sign it by June next year, that law, so that then we know he is a true believer of this BBI has been talking about. Let him demonstrate. The Bible says, let your actions speak louder than your words. Mr. Speaker, speak using your words. Mr. Speaker, I saw the Speaker of the National Assembly the other day berating and accusing, Mr. Speaker, and accusing, Mr. Speaker, this House and other people who are not in this House about how, Mr. Speaker, they frustrated devolution, devolution to have a lot of money. Let the Speaker of National Assembly and members of National Assembly, particularly those who voted for BBI, there were very few of them who voted no. Let them now demonstrate that when we send their bill here, division of revenue bill here, even if it's 495, let them pass it. Because the greatest impediment for devolution has been the Speaker of the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I want to say this. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, withdraw. I know where we you are going. Yes, yes, I know please, where you are going. Please, Mr. Yes. Speaker, I should not discuss the Speaker of the yeah, National don't Assembly. Discuss this. But Mr. Speaker, uh, the presidential candidates of the DP party, Mr. Speaker, out there, was uh, trying to accuse Mr. Speaker this House. This House has been a great defender, Mr. Speaker, of devolution in this House. And we want to tell DP and their presidential candidate. Mr. Speaker, to demonstrate elsewhere where they serve, that Mr. Speaker, they also believe in devolution the way we believe in devolution in this you know, you know, you just say DP could be winning the deputy president. No, so we'll... De Democratic Party, Mr. Speaker, a very respectable <laughs> party, which was led by the best president of the Republic, uh, has uh, degenerated nowadays, Mr. Speaker, to a one man party. But the point I'm trying to make is that this, uh, Mr. Speaker, devolution must be demonstrated through actions by people who, Mr. Speaker, sit in positions of power. The last thing I'd like to say, Mr. Speaker, is that this uh, uh, budget policy statement, Mr. Speaker, lastly, is uh, the question of uh, uh, conditional grants. Mr. Speaker, the legal framework, uh, I am glad the committee captured this very important f uh, fact that, Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that there is a court ruling of 2016 that gave clear ways, Mr. Speaker, of implementation of Article 190 of the Constitution, county governments have never benefited from grants, Mr. Speaker, from national level, like Senator Kajuan captured, we would like to see these grants 
Mr. Speaker, conditional grants going to our counties and our county governments having responsibility, having signed the agreements with the national government on the question of uh, the uh, uh, resources. The last thing, Mr. Speaker, it is shocking. If you go to page 11 of uh, the moving notes of the chair, you will find, Mr. Speaker, the outstanding guaranteed debt of state enterprises, which, comes, which stands at 157 billion. Of the 157 billion, Mr. Speaker, only one company, Kenya Airways, has, Mr. Speaker, has been guaranteed by the national government 80 billion, exposing the people of Kenya to this level of uh, debt, Mr. Speaker, for a company that cannot explain exactly what they are doing with this money, Mr. Speaker. It's still down. It has 80 billion, Mr. Speaker, which has borrowed. We don't know who owns the plans. A lot of reports have been done by National Assembly and this house about Kenya Airways, Mr. Speaker. The Kenya Airways remains one of the national, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, assets that we must, Mr. Speaker, re-audit and to understand who are the beneficiaries of this 80 billion borrowed, Mr. Speaker. Who are these individuals? And I like what Senator Kajuang said. The same way, Senator Kajuang, you say that we don't want the projects that terminate in somebody's land. Mr. Speaker, and I didn't ask you who is that person. It's the same way, Mr. Speaker, I want to say we do not want also, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, debts of 80 billion. That, Mr. Speaker, if you investigate, the beneficiary is just one individual and his own personal companies and the resources they are going to get. This country must become serious. And, Mr. Speaker, after next elections, I pray that we, some of us who will still come here will become even more serious in auditing these companies, especially when those people will no longer be in positions of power to protect themselves. Mr. Speaker, and to loot public resources, especially with this hypocrisy, they have always talked about corruption. We want to tell them after August next year, let us, let's meet in this chamber and investigate these programs when you are not holding the sword of power and we find out exactly how much of these resources have been looted for individual gain. Mr. Speaker, I really support this report. I congratulate the committee. This is the right reason why we came here. I'm glad, Mr. Speaker, you do not cut time so that all of us can give our points Mr. Speaker, and I believe we should support the 495 billion, but I pray that we increase another 100 billion, Mr. Speaker, 200 billion to get it to 630 billion, Mr. Speaker, in line with what the Pharisees in BBI had proposed. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.